This lesson is very closely related to a lesson from the last module, the one on corresponding parts of similar figures. Um, and we're using indirect measurement, you see, is defined. It's finding measurements using other measurements that we've already found. So for example, in part A, we're talking about how sunlight creates shadows, as shown in the figure below. So you see that the vertical segment is the flagpole, and the horizontal segment is its shadow on the ground. And the dashed segment is representing the ray of sunlight. So here we have a triangle. It's asking what kind of triangle is formed by the flagpole, its shadow, and the ray of sunlight. And it's a right triangle. If the sun is shining and we are standing near a flagpole but out of its shadow, we will cast a shadow as well. And we can assume that the rays of the sun are parallel, so what do we know about the two triangles formed? Well, we already know that they have one pair of congruent angles, the right angles, and if we consider these parallel lines being cut by this transversal that is the ground, then we have these corresponding angles being congruent. So, by alternate interior angles theorem, and angle-angle similarity, the triangles are similar. So in the diagram, what heights or lengths do we already know? Well, hopefully we know how tall we are. Um, what heights or lengths can be measured directly? we should be able to very easily measure the lengths of the shadows. And how can we use similar triangles to measure the height of the flagpole indirectly? Since the triangles are similar, their corresponding sides are proportional. So, my shadow over my height would equal the flag's shadow, or the flagpole's shadow, over the flagpole's height. So let's use this line of thinking to indirectly find a measurement. So we have triangle XYZ and triangle ABC. The length of AB is representing the height of a palm tree. The length of XY is a meter stick. And notice how they have AB is to XY equal to BC over YZ. They've substituted the values in, and then they solve for the missing variable. Similar idea in part B. Sid is 72 inches tall. He measures a flagpole by standing near the flag and measures his shadow. It is 48 inches. Measures the flagpole shadow. It is 128. So so they've got the proportion set up in a little bit of a different manner but it is an equivalent proportion. So they've got the flagpole's height over the person's height equals the flagpole's shadow over the person's shadow. And then they're substituting the measurements in. So H is to 72 as 
128 is 248. And they're setting it up, by, or they're solving it by multiplying both sides by 72. You might have solved it by cross multiplying. Either way, you should end up in the same place. So 72 times 128. Divided by 48, so x is 192. So the flagpole is 192 inches tall. In this example, Liam is six feet tall. He found his shadow to be eight feet long. He wants to find the height of a tree whose shadow is 28 feet long. So 6 over h will equal 8 over 28. Cross multiply and solve, I've got 8h equal to 6 times 28, which is 168. Divide both sides by 8, and h is 21. So the height of the tree is 21. We can also use indirect measurements to find, for example, distances across a canyon. Sometimes you may see it expressed as the distance across a lake. Um, so we have a very similar example here where we have these two similar triangles. Notice the proportion that they've set up, and then they cross multiplied to solve. The words are kind of the breakdown of how she laid out the measurements. But what you need to make sure that you're able to figure out is, first of all, why these triangles are similar and how you can use them to set up and solve a proportion. So let's do that here. Um, we know that angle or triangle JKL is similar to triangle NML by angle angle triangle similarity. And if you're not quite seeing what the other angle is, we'll talk about that momentarily. So I know that JK is to NM as KL is to ML. Substitute in the lengths that I know. So D is to 35 as 24 is to 42. And they're multiplying both sides by 35, which might be a different approach than you're using. But you should end up in the exact same place. Now, they have it as 35 times, and then they reduced the 24 over 42. Um, so 24 over 42 reduces to 4 sevenths. And when I multiply 35 times 4, I've got 140 over that 7. So the distance is 20 meters. So earlier I mentioned that I'd be coming back to the topic of why is angle JLK congruent to angle NLF? That's these two angles. And by now, it should be pretty darn automatic for you to realize those angles are vertical angles. So the angles are congruent by the vertical angle theorem. Pause your video to work through the your turn below.